To kick things off this morning, we have three financial institutions that are going to be sharing a little bit about the programs that they offer, maybe what they look for, tips of folks that are looking to get into agriculture, what are some things you can do to help improve credit scores, and all of those kind of crucial bits of, bits of information. We have Colonial Farm Credit. We're fortunate to have Paul Franklin, who's the CEO of Colonial Farm Credit here as well, and Chris Sims, who's a regional lending manager, um, as well as others uh, on the team as well. So Paul and Chris, I'll call on you. and. Uh, Take it from here. Let's give him a hand, please. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you. Great morning, everybody. Good morning. Dr. Corley, I like that one. I'm going to use that from, from now on. Uh, Secretary Lohr, thank you so much for putting this together, hosting this in VSU, a phenomenal program. You guys have the Small Farm Outreach Program uh, does great things. If you're not tuned in to the Small Farm Outreach Program, I encourage you to do so. Uh, they cover a wide variety of uh, operations. Uh, they get into the financial side of it as well. Um, so please tune into that channel early and often because that can help you with your ag enterprises. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what we do in our educational side as well, but we really try to tag team a lot with VSU because of the great programs they have. Um, so we'll talk about Colonial Farm Credit, see if I can drive uh, this. Oh yeah, I love how we start a presentation with a disclaimer. <laughs> We are not accountants, uh, we are not attorneys, but I will say um, Dr. David Cole uh, was a big mentor of mine, a professor emeritus at Virginia Tech. He always talked about when you run an operation, uh, you should try to put together a team of advisors. Uh, so speaking of accountants and attorneys, uh, you need folks on your side to help you with that aspect of the business, especially an accountant that understands agriculture because of the seasonality of everything. Uh, the tax treatments with ag stuff uh, is pretty unique. Uh, so assemble a team of folks in that regard that can help you. I'll also say on this that you're going to get some information from Chris Sims today, our regional lending manager in Windsor, uh, things that you can use at any bank. It doesn't have to be just Colonial Farm Credit, but what do lenders look for uh, when they're looking at lending you money? So we'll go through some of that. Also, Cab Harwood is here with us as well. I don't, oh, there, Cab's in the back. Uh, as well with Colonial Farm Credit. So that's, that's our team here today. Um, and I'm going to do the overview real quick, and then Chris is going to jump into some very specific things that can help your operation financially. So I'm going to be kind of quick, but Farm Credit is unique. Uh, we are not Farm Bureau. I say that a lot. I've been doing this for, I've been working in the Farm Credit system for 33 years, and I have friends that sometimes still, they're not agriculture people. And they'll go, well, you're Farm Bureau, you're insurance, you're Farm Bureau. No, we lend. We lend money. We are not Farm Bureau. We love Farm Bureau. They've got, they've got great programs, too. They do a lot of ag advocacy. They have a young beginning uh, farmer program that's really good as well. But we are different from that. Uh, we are a lender, and we are a cooperative. We got started in 1916 by Congress because there was a shortage of money for land financing. Um, so that was the impetus for the whole farm credit system. Uh, so we've got a long track record. Um, we cover the entire country uh, through a network of associations. Colonial is just one of about 60 associations across the country. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, we are, if you collectively look at all the assets and the activity within the farm credit system, we are the nine largest bank, if you look at it that way, although we're not a bank. And I'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, our mission is very simple. Uh, we're here to support rural communities in agriculture with dependable credit in good times and in bad times, and that's a very important thing in agriculture. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Essex County, a grain farm, and uh, I learned about farming mainly uh, my teenage years were in the 80s. Uh, that was a pretty tough time. Corn prices were around $2 a bushel. If you had a 100 bushel crop, that was a phenomenal crop. Uh, crop insurance wasn't as robust as it is now, uh, so if you had a bad year, you had to go back to your lender and refinance what you couldn't pay, pay back and do it over the long term. Uh, tough time. I ended up in farm credit instead of working on the farm. Uh, my brother and my father worked together, and they, my father retired a successful farmer. My brother still farms, uh, but at that time, it was kind of tough to bring me in on the farm, uh, the way prices were. And so I, I have a passion really for helping people get into farming and staying in farming 
and all of our folks at Colonial feel the same way. Uh, most of our folks have experience on the farm or are drawn to the farm. Uh, as Dr. Corley says, you know, pretty much nothing happens if you don't have a meal, three solid meals a day. Uh, if you're tied to agriculture, you're tied to something that's fundamental for all of us and for this country, uh, and we have a commitment to that. Uh, how we get our money, this is one of the things that's unique about us. Uh, we don't take deposits, so we don't have checking accounts, savings accounts, CDs, things of that nature. Uh, we actually go out into the bond market uh, through our funding corporation. So really, instead of going left to right, go right to left on this one. Uh, the investors uh, globally will buy uh, consolidated farm credit debt, and that gets filtered all the way to us at the local level uh, through bond issuances. There are four funding banks that facilitate this. Uh, you'll see in there farm credit system banks kind of in the middle there. Uh, we actually buy our money from one of those banks, and then we resell re, uh, it to you as a customer. Um, so the thing that's really unique is we're bringing money from Wall Street to Main Street. That's one of the things we like to say. The money's coming from international investors, from big domestic investors, and we're able to deliver that into rural communities because of that funding. Uh, one thing that helps us with that, because it's consolidated in that way, we've got good uh, interest rate risk management. Uh, we can offer long-term fixed rates on uh, unimproved land. in the marketplace. Uh, Colonial, in particular, uh, serves the eastern part of Virginia in five counties in southern Maryland. You'll see a map of that in a second. Uh, we do, we have 80 employees. Uh, we have 5,000 plus accounts, and behind each account, there's an average of about two people. And uh, so we consider everybody that has an account a shareholder. We actually have 10,000 shareholders in our organization. We've got about 80 employees serving 10,000 shareholders. We're proud of how we are efficient and work hard to serve that many people in our community. Uh, this is where we are located, but keep in mind, Farm Credit is nationwide, so there's Farm Credit, Farm Credit of the Virginias is to our west in Virginia, and uh, Horizon Farm Credit actually covers the eastern shore of Virginia. Uh, but you can see where we are, um, a lot of grain production, a lot of timber, and we consider timber uh, and aquaculture and anybody harvesting seafood products uh, eligible for us, that's all farming in our mind. You're producing something. Um, it's just different than what a lot of people think. Uh, a lot of times I think people, the, the quintessential farm is a dairy farm. I think in a lot of people's mind that don't know a lot about agriculture, but there's all different kinds of agriculture out there in our area. And one thing that's interesting about our territory too is you know, we're influenced by DC and Northern Virginia and down into Norfolk, Virginia Beach. So there's a lot of development. Um, there's a lot of urban area in there. And there's a lot of opportunity for agriculture direct from farm to the consumer. That's kind of unique compared to being you know, in the Midwest where you don't have that higher population. There are challenges with that. There's a lot of pressure on land, a lot of development going on. Uh, so trying, trying to find ways to be efficient, trying to find ways to preserve farmland long term is very important as well. Uh, we are owned by our customers, so anybody that borrows money from us becomes a shareholder. So we, if you go out and borrow some money tomorrow, we'll have 10,001 shareholders out there. Um, you vote for our board of directors as a customer. Uh, we've got 12 elected directors. Uh, and actually, we have an elected director that's appointed for Forge Products, and then we've got two outside directors to provide financial expertise. So we've got a 15-member board. Uh, but the majority, vast majority of that board comes from our shareholder base. And we share our profits with our customers because you own us. If we have a good year, we're going to share our profits back with you. And it's been pretty substantial through the years. Uh, you can see $197 million in patronage paid out in the last 25 years. Our total capital is around $200 million, So we've actually paid out in profits as much as our total capitalization now through the years. So what, what does that mean to you? Uh, we typically budget around 25% of the interest to be returned to a customer. Depends on the year, depends on the conditions, but our target right now is 25%. So that essentially can cut your interest rate. Say you got an 8% interest rate right now, that can cut it by a couple of percentage points if we have a good year. Has to be approved by the board, 
but we've been doing it for a long time and have a great track record with it. You can see our financials. You can go online and see our financials. You can see everything about us there and how we operate. So the cooperative model is a great model. Uh, I love working in it. It's been 33 years now total doing it. I, I, um, my father at the time, we were, were talking about farm credit and he said, you may want to talk to them uh, and see if you could find a job there. And I went and met a few people with him. I was still in college and we were riding back home. I said, Dad, I really like that place. It's a nice, uh, everybody's really nice. I like serving farmers and all that. I said, but everybody seems to work there like 30 years. I can't imagine working at the same place for 30 straight years. And here I am, it, it happened to me. Um, but every day is a different day. We learn something new. We try to uh, um, adapt to the environment. So it's been a great place for me. Uh, and again, we focus on agriculture. So we don't do, you know, commercial development. We don't do hotels or uh, any kind of commercial real estate. It is, it is farming. We do home loans in rural areas. So a house and a lot we can do, but we're very specialized. Uh, and I feel like that's one of our strengths um, that we're focused entirely on agriculture and rural communities. Uh, so that's kind of an overview. And Chris, I will turn the mic over to you. Thank you, Paul. And um, as Paul said, I'm, I'm Chris Sims. I'm a regional lending manager that serves uh, the basically the southeast part of the state for us. Uh, covers the Dinwiddie, Chesapeake, Cortland, Waverly, and Windsor offices. Uh, I've been in Farm Credit 20, going on 25 years now. Uh, next year, and uh, just like all, I grew up on a farm, uh, but but things just didn't work out for myself to return to the farm, but still wanted to be connected to agriculture, so uh, that led me to farm credit. So, towards the end of the presentation, I'll talk briefly about our loan programs, uh, but what my real goal here is to give you some nuggets that you can take away. As Paul said, uh, we want to share with you some information that you can use regardless of, of what financial institution you may be dealing with uh, and how you can be prepared in meeting with those lenders. Um, our mission is serving agriculture, whether that's lending money to agriculture or whether that's helping agriculture grow through education, uh, that, is, that is what we do. So every lender is in the business of assessing risk. Our risk that we're willing to take may be different than what BSV is willing to take, may be different than what First Bank and Trust or FSA uh, is willing to take. But understand, we aren't looking at you personally, we're looking at the risk that you have for your operation, your financial numbers, your credit scores, those type of things. We're assessing the risk to determine is that a loan that we're able to make. So as you're meeting with the lender, you want to understand what their job is. Um, when you meet with the lender, you want to be prepared. Have your information together. Don't come in with a shoebox full of receipts like you might take to your accountant to prepare your taxes, right? Come in prepared with some information together for us to help us better understand your operation and understand your business. Um, you know your business. We don't know your business, and that's the point that, that we have to learn uh, in meeting with you. So have your information together, have your financial statement together, have your income statement, tax returns, have some projections and budget together. What does your operation look like for generating income? What are the expenses you have? If you have a business plan, that's great. Bring that in. It can be a very simple business plan. It can be a complex business plan, whatever it is. Bring that in. One of the things I passed out beforehand uh, in getting started was this financial ratio sheet. Uh, if I didn't get one to you, we have plenty more here at the table. I'm not gonna cover that in detail for this one. It's, it's more uh, time consuming to go through, but this is a reference for you to have to understand a lot of the financial ratios that a lender uh, will be looking at when they look at your operation. Um, it has some benchmarks on there, green, yellow, and red as to where your ratio may fall from a benchmarking standpoint when we look at those. Uh, so that's a tool to help you in talking with the lender so that you can understand their language uh, and what they're going to be looking at from a ratio standpoint. If you have any questions on that, be glad to talk with you about that uh, later on today. Uh, know the information that you present to the lender about your business. Uh, know loan amounts and terms that you need. 
be reasonable in what you request. If you need a $50,000 loan for a piece of equipment, be reasonable in asking and explaining what you need. Um, don't ask for a 20 year term on a piece of equipment because the lender is not going to make you a 20 year term on a 10 year old tractor. Okay, but a five year loan is reasonable and uh, to be expected there. A 20 year loan is going to be reasonable for a piece of land. Five years may not, five years could be on land, but understand and be reasonable and explain what you're looking for. And ask questions of the lender. We're going to ask you questions. You feel free to ask us questions. We're always glad to explain anything that we can. One of the, thing, one of the things that a lender is really going to look at is your credit score. What is your credit score? That comes into play in determining risk. But not just for loans, that comes into play for your insurance. It comes into play for if you're renting a, an apartment. Uh, it's, it's so ubiquitous across the range, not just from a lending standpoint. Uh, so one of the things I'd encourage you to do if you have not looked at your, your credit scores, your credit report recently, uh, go take a look at it. There are three primary credit agencies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Information's gonna be a little bit different across each one. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute, I'll share with you in a minute how to go get that. Uh, understand that the score that you see may be different than the score that the lender uses. So if you go out there and say, Karma and get a score that says you have a 750 score. Well, that may be different than the score that I pull. It may be different than the score that any other lender pulls because there are hundreds of scoring models. In general, scores will range from 300 to 850, but your 750 you see may be a 720 for me. It may be a 775 for somebody else, depending on the model that they use. Okay, so just understand there are differences along the way. Uh, there's some general information in. We'll share out this uh, slideshow, slide deck uh, after the program where you see have all this information for seeing these, uh, these numbers as well. Uh, general info on how your scores are calculated, really the most important factor is paying your payments on time. A lot of times you hear about, I don't want to get my credit pulled, right? You don't want it pulled that often. Well, actually only about 10% of your score actually comes from it being pulled. They actually recognize that if you're, say, shopping for a new car and you're gonna have it pulled three or four or five times, that is actually grouped together and doesn't have a huge impact there. Uh, so don't let that bother you, but you don't wanna go out and get it pulled every month, right? But uh, understand that if you need to shop around at one given time, that's not a problem. <coughs> if you need to uh, check your credit report, annualcreditreport.com is the place to go. That's actually the uh, government sponsored site. Uh, you're entitled to get a copy of your credit report from each of the credit agencies um, each year. So every 12 months you're entitled to a free copy of your credit score. So if you have not checked it recently, I would suggest going to pull your credit report and go check, um, go check your scores, go check your information to make sure that it's accurate and correct because it is gonna be important everywhere you go. So in general, uh, here I wanna to touch real quick on the types of loans that we offer. Uh, we do operating financing, uh, so we, we will fund your operating expenses for your operation. Uh, generally that is set up so that repayment on those are timed with whatever your uh, cash flow needs are. So for a general row crop operation, if you have uh, cash flow coming due at harvest, we're gonna set that up on a 12 month term normally to fit when your cash flow comes in. Um, variable interest rates, they're indexed to prime um, and we can electronically transfer those funds uh, to your account. You can also actually pay online uh, to transfer it electric, electronically back when you need to. Um, I'm not gonna get very in detail on any of these because it is very unique to your operation. Uh, so when you're meeting with your lender, just understand the types of loans that are available for being able to discuss how that fits your needs. Uh, equipment financing generally up to five years, fixed rate for the life of the loan. Uh, we can structure payments monthly, quarterly, semi-annual or annual, again, depending on your cash flow situation. If your income is coming in generally on an annual basis, we will structure that payment. If you're in a vegetable operation where you have normally monthly payments coming in, 
we will normally structure that so that it is monthly payments. We want to time your payment flow, your cash flow with the payments that you have. Land loans, what is really unique for farm credit, Paul mentioned that we can finance up to 20 years for a fixed rate for unimproved agricultural farmland, timberland, um, and up to 80% financing of either the purchase price or appraised value, whichever is actually lower. We have no acreage minimums, no acreage restrictions. Uh, we can do an, an acre up to thousands of acres, so no restrictions there. Uh, I know that in a little while you'll actually hear more about FSA. Uh, we do a lot of work with the various FSA programs uh, as they make sense and as they have a fit for your operation. Uh, but just know that we, we do work with FSA and leverage in their programs. And it might have frozen up. There we go. <laughs> Final thing. Um, I mentioned education. Education is very important to farm credit. Uh, we have two programs that are available uh, that go more in, in depth. One is the Ag Biz Basics program. Uh, it is completely online. It's a four module course online that helps you understand the basics of financial analysis, balance sheets, income statements, and the like. Uh, getting more in depth, we have an Ag Biz Planner program. That is a 10 module course. Uh, begins with a kickoff session uh, that is, that is uh, handled by Dr. Dave Cole, uh, 10 modules, and then we finish up with a day and a half in-person session, uh, normally in Raleigh, uh, and about the January, February timeframe where we, where we finish it up and wrap up that program as well. If you have interest in going more in depth in understanding uh, financial information, balance sheets, uh, tax returns, how all that impacts your operation, I'd encourage you to look into one of these two programs. We do have some flyers over here at the table that has more details about the Ag Biz Planner and Ag Biz Basics. Love to talk with you about that and uh, we can get you enrolled in that. And with that, that is uh, ours. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris and Paul, for, uh, for bringing the perspective of what Farm Credit offers. So they are certainly uh, uh, one of the, the wonderful options that we have in thinking about getting into agriculture. So thank you all so much.